Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about what is a SharePoint site and why you should never use them. Stick around to the end of the video to find out what Microsoft recommends you do instead. When I say SharePoint subsite, this might conjure up images of a submarine base from Microsoft, but that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is sites in SharePoint which live underneath other SharePoint sites. So this comes from quite a classic way of working with SharePoint. And when SharePoint originated in the days of using servers, um, when we had on-premise versions of SharePoint, that's where this concept of SharePoint subsites came from. Originally, what it was would be a structure a bit like this, very sort of rigid kind of structure. At the very top, you'd kind of have your kind of root site, essentially. And then underneath that, you would have your first level sites, which are often referred to as site collections, and then you'd have sites underneath them. So this root site often at the very top wouldn't be used for anything all that much really um, um, as it was kind of the core kind of root. The next layer down would be a kind of site collection. So that's where you would tend to find there might be one for like your internet homepage. Sometimes the root might be used for the internet homepage depending on, on, on the preferences of the SharePoint administration team. Um, but these could be, at this level could be the internet homepage as well. But definitely at this level, the first level would be like your department sites. So you might have one for like HR, one for marketing, one for finance, one for IT, all the different kind of operational departments with inside of your organization. Or if you're an enterprise organization, that layer might also be countries as well. So it might be, say, the US or, or something like that. Or, um, again, traditionally, sometimes um, people might have the first level just called departments or business units. So it might have been business units, then underneath that they had departments, for example. Then underneath this, you'd have multiple kind of structures, and some of these structures would be absolutely massive. So it might be that the root is your, in, uh, your intranet. The first level is then says business units. The next level is then departments. Then under departments, you've got teams. Then within the teams, you've got projects and things like that. And they would just be nested in this forever ending chain of sites which sit underneath other sites. Just to visualize a bit more, again, the classical kind of approach was always you'd have your web application, and then this is what we call a site collection. So this top level here is a site collection, which can then have subsites underneath it. So this layer here, as I say, this might be a business unit. Um, and then you might have, say, for example, uh, department finance, IT, something like that. And then within that, you've got subsites within subsites. So you can have this never ending kind of chain of kind of structured underneath it. A site collection is a top level container, fundamentally in SharePoint that houses all the different subsites. It can be seen as a grouping of SharePoint sites with a common top level site and shared features, as well as settings, permissions, um, and navigation bars. Each site collection has its own content database and security boundaries when we're talking about on-premise versions of SharePoint. Site collections can be used to organize and manage related content efficiently. Now, when we're talking about subsites, a subsite is also known um, as a subweb when we're talking about it in classical SharePoint terms. Um, it's a site that's created within a site collection. Subsites inherit some settings and features from their parent site, but can also have unique settings and content. Um, that are it's quite useful for organizing content in hierarchical way within a site collection. However, Microsoft will discourage this use of subsites in certain scenarios, which we'll discuss um, now. So. This is the classic way of using SharePoint. It should not be used like this anymore, especially when we're talking about SharePoint online. This needs to be scrapped immediately. So instead, what options have we got? So to replace this, Microsoft have given us the hub site. The hub site is like the top of the kind of Christmas tree when you think about it from a hierarchical point of view. But in reality, they've actually kind of flattened the structure and this is what it should look like. So we've got, say for example, a hub site. Now this, depending on the size of your organization, depending on the amount of hub sites that you have, small to medium sized organizations tend to only have one hub site and that's that intranet kind of homepage, which then has departments um, and team sites that sit around that. Microsoft have also recently introduced the ability to have hub sites associating to other hub sites. So hub sites now, essentially, for example, we could have a HR hub. 
then each of these different sites could be different SharePoint sites which have content related to it. So for example, you've got Manager's uh, Portal. This could be restricted. It might be a communication site and only accessible, accessible to managers. You've got Diversity and Inclusion, which might be opened up to the whole organization and everyone has access to it. Same goes for Education Credits, Talent Acquisition, Training and Employee Benefits. Then you might have two private SharePoint sites, which are more than likely going to be team sites. And these are for collaboration from the HR team to create the content and the materials which then get published to these other communication sites. So these two might be team sites, which also could have a Microsoft team associated to them for conversations and, and collaboration going on in the background. So although they are still part of the hub site, they're still associated to that, only certain people would have access to actually be able to go and view them. I just wanted to pause the video there for a quick second to ask a favor. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in slingshotting your learning and becoming a SharePoint Pro much quicker, you might also be interested in my paid membership. If you go to my channel, you'll see that there's already over 100 paid members for my channel who've all joined my membership for only 99 pence per month. With this, you can get access to a six-part training series which covers everything from SharePoint document libraries, advanced features, SharePoint navigation, and search best practices. Once you've completed that, there's also a step-by-step -step guide to show you how to build your own intranet, including a modern intranet homepage and department sites. There's also a premium um, members-only Q&A where you can ask any questions that you've got and get a priority response, as well as the ability to join part of the poll to actually submit your ideas for what other training you would like to see. So if you're enjoying this video, please go and check out my membership options. Let's get back to the video. So Microsoft have recommended avoiding the use of subsites in modern SharePoint architectures. Um, that's because they want to see flat structure like we can see here. A modern SharePoint promotes a flatter structure with fewer levels of hierarchy, making it easy to manage and navigate. It also means if any of those sites needed to then reassociate to a different hub site, you can do that really easily. Whereas with subsites, once they're in that structure, they are locked in place. So we're using subsites for things like permissions or navigation, then it becomes a real problem to move around. Whereas with hub sites and associated sites associating to those hub sites, you could unhook them from a hub site at any time and rehook them into a new hub structure if you wanted to. Hub sites provide a more flexible and scalable way to organize and connect related sites without constraints of any traditional sub sites. The site collection approach using site collections instead of sub sites um, allows for better isolation of content, permissions, and scalability. Um, so why use SharePoint Hub Sites? Um, as I say, it provides a unified experience. So it provides branding across all of the sites which are associated to that site. For example, this is what my Hub Site looks like and I can associate um, any sites to this and it would automatically inherit these blue colors that I'm using and this Hub Navigation Bar across the top. So I don't have to specify that on each of the sites. It's much more flexible and hub sites allow for dynamic associations so you can easily connect or disconnect sites based on changing organizational needs. So for example, there might be a particular type of project site that uh, it, when at the beginning of the year, it is actually associated to um, the Asia hub site. And then by the end of the year, that project's changed and the responsibility now is signed to the US. So it needs to then change its association to the US. It's nice and easy to move that around. Whereas with old subsites, that wouldn't be possible. You'd have to completely recreate the site. Um, from a content aggregation point of view, hub sites facilitate content to be rolled up from all of the different sites which are associated to it. So you can roll up news, you can roll up um, documents and uh, announcements, even events directly onto your hub site. As well as, as I say, the navigation, the branding is automatically inherited as well. You should be considering moving, if, you, if you're currently using sub sites, you should be considering moving to this new hub um, structure as soon as possible. It's future proofing it. Um, investing in hub sites uh, positions your organization for future SharePoint updates and improvements, ensuring ongoing support and compatibility with all the rest of the Microsoft SharePoint products. 
um, you will find that you will have problems with Microsoft um, support and things like that if you're still using the old classic ways of working. So the community and support aspects are really important. Um, as Microsoft continues to encourage the use of hub sites, the community support documentation and resources around hub sites are likely to grow, providing a more robust ecosystem. So you will fit part of that and grow into that. And any of the documentation that you see related, especially to SharePoint Online, will start to make less and less sense if you're continuing to use that sub-site structure. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and check out my membership options for my channel. Thank you very much for your time watching.